Morning, Mark Savage here, and welcome to my channel. The Humble Derby Terrain. I don't know why I kept calling it a pretty the other day. Having the foggiest idea. These are really good, big looking bikes. 70, 80 mile an hour. They do go really well. What's the main problem with these? Now, I've had several of these. They all suffer from the same problems. Now, half of it is the previous owner. Now, not Josh, because he inherited this bike with pretty much the problems it already had. But I do suffer from them. Rear brake, sprocket and chain, side stand, and running. Now, when I say running, they need regularly servicing. If you've got a bike that will do 70, 80 miles an hour, it's pushing it. So you need to regularly service them. I don't just mean a plug and the oil, or that really does help. And when servicing these, you need to do a proper job of it. Seat, tank off, panels off. Get to the things you need to get to. Don't do half a job. Because if you're lifting up things and ramming your hands in, you don't know what you're disconnecting, pulling, pushing. Carburetors on these are stuck in the corner here. I'll show you all around it in a minute. They are hard to get to, and this is why I don't get regularly serviced. You need to take them off and give them a good clean when it won't start properly. The other problem with this one, as you know, is this mammoth thing here. Now, he's got the original exhaust. I've still got to pick it up, which Josh, I will do. But this isn't helping. Every bike needs back pressure to start. When it's just pumping over and it's flying out the back, it's going to be a bugger to start. So although it sounds a bit like a tank, it may sound good, you know, beefiness and everything else, you're losing what the bike's about, which is back pressure and enabling it to get the pressure up to start and then kick it all out. So this is one problem. Now, chain and sprocket, because these are big bikes, it's a lot of pull on the rear chain and they're gonna stretch. When they start stretching, they start moving around a lot on the actual cogs and they start wearing them out. So chain and sprocket, gone. Not a lot of money though, 50 quid. Well worth doing and it needs to be done. Rear brake, oh dear. So it seems like the pads were going down and down and down and down. So rather than replacing them, you kept putting your foot on the back brake, you start scoring the disc, which means the piston's coming out even further, and it's either damaged the actual piston, which allowed all the brake fluid to come out, or the mast cylinder's gone now, but the way we are now is realistically, I think it needs all replacing. So I've got to take it all off and have a look at that. Video after this with me actually repairing it all. But today is just a chat about the things that go wrong with them. The rear light also seems to get bashed around whether it's kicked or not, it's got some sellotape on it. And this little bit here is the micro switch, just like on the peds I do. This is for the front brake, and when you pull it, the back light comes on. This is disconnected. Actually been pulled off, I guess, because it may have been on all the time. So they thought that might have been it, I don't know haven't really looked at it. Does it run? It does run, I've heard it running. Will it run now? Not a chance. Um, because you're gonna need a lot out of the battery. And again, these are just tiny little batteries. When it comes down to batteries, trickle charging and stuff like that, that just keeps what you've got in the battery. So if you've got a 6% battery, you're trickle charging it back up to that. It won't put up to 100% again. Sometimes you need to take the battery off and give it a good charge on a desk charger whatever you might use. The trickle charges, they just keep them as they are. So like this one, it's taking ages and ages and ages to start, unless you really fully charge up again, it's always gonna be really low. And say, so, because they're small, so these new lithium batteries for this bike, I'd most certainly invest in. Little back box, always handy. <sighs> okay, these are adventure style bikes. So having a back box, I don't think looks that bad to be honest with you. Um, it's good to have a little bit of luggage on any bike rather than a backpack. They're really quite a tall bike, so it's nice. And the presence on the road, as I said before, people do think you're a much bigger bike, except the big L plate on the front that might give it away. This bike has been for the wars. Had quite a few owners. It's been dropped here and there. I think you can see this. It's even got a snapped brake lever, which means this has been off, come off. I think there's some cracks here. Um, panel off, bond it, do you know? All you need is a heat glue gun and a plastic carton. You spread the glue on it, you push the carton on the back of it, and that really does do a good job. No more of this P38 stuff and the fiberglass stuff anymore, it'd be quite messy. 
and glue guns are so cheap to get hold of. Really worth an investment if you've got cracked panels. Now, Josh already gave us an oil change, so that's a big bonus, and he's already got to the plug, although I'm gonna take all the panels off and check everything. I know he done it, but I've had it so many times before where people said things and just not done it right. Plus the fact the carburetor might be slightly dirty or it's not running right, the plug, the new plug he's put in now will just be all coffeeed up anyway. Air filter coming out replacing, remember that's got a little drain bit in there to keep clean as well. So people really want to start doing proper services on bikes, you need to do the whole thing. So it's air filter, oil filter and plug, if you've got the oil filter there, change the oil. I get a lot of questions about the old oil. 1040 oil is great in these, semi-synthetic which I always use, motorbike oil. I wouldn't use fully synthetic unless it's a race bike or it actually says you've got to use it. The BMW RT that I've just done, that really wants you to put mineral oil in it. It didn't want you to put semi-synthetic oil in it. Because of the old style bikes. Modern bikes really want to use them. Um, under the seat, and I've got this, had it up already. You've got your air box here and your tiny little battery here. While I'm pointing to things, let's just have a quick look around it. Put this back on for a second. Like that. What do you get for your money? You get this massive, massive front tyre. 21 inch. You know, that is just ginormous. You get a bit of wiggle from them, to be honest with you, on bigger bikes. But still, brilliant. Again, nice bit of wind protection. The front end of the bike, I actually think, as I said, this could be a 650 Fundero. I'm noticing though, there's a hole there, and you know what that hole means? That should be a side light. So somewhere, I'm sure, dangling under here will be a side light. MOT failure without that. Shock covers is all good. Front disc is massive. Can't see the brake pa uh, pads on here, but I'm sure they're gonna be down as well when something probably replacing. If the back brake hasn't been working all this time, he's been front braking it. Nice to see a nice engine guard. Whether it's got a can in fill on it, who knows. Panels, a little bit tatty. More tatty panels. These are just, well, tightening up needs sorting out. This is where it's been obviously over. You need a bung in there. You can't just whack that on there because you better twist this, would you? Uh, again, off the market. Yep. MOT failure and broken. There's some sandal crack panels. Get them off. Bond them. It makes sense, take off, take off, get to where you need to get to. Little engines here, huh. at least this is all still good now. As I'm saying, it looks like it's got nothing in it at all. There's no, there's no back pressure there. That's just absolutely terrible. It's f f just wrong. Um, and obviously I think this has been running, we'll take it off in the next video. I think this has been running right out and all the uh, breakthroughs come out. And always a bit worrying with a rear tyre like that, you know? Makes you wonder was the last owner, not Josh, the last owner just jamming on the back brake and doing skids everywhere. It's a possibility, not clever though. Out of the tunnel of doom. That's pretty massive, isn't it? You know, that really is massive. Although it may look cool, it's got to come off. It's, it's one of the problems with this bike as it is. Another cannon sticker. Good old tape on the back light. I mean, again, if you can, take all this off. Find out where original screws are. We screw it in. If not, bond it in. Worth doing. And this is a 66 plate. Had an awful lot of owners. It really has. Um, for a 66 plate, what's that? Just three years old? And I think, you know, it's had five owners. Um, all, I guess, uncaring. But there you go. Chain and sprocket. You know, when you've got this much play, it's going to start into these... It's not brilliant, probably there's a whole lot changing. Nice shock, adjustable. And your engine, right, carburetor, right in there. Not very easy to get to at all. A whole lot's got to come off, get it all out, have a look a little. Seeing this here, you know it's water cooled. It's something that gets forgot about. It really is, and I am going to drain all of this out and put nice, fresh, antifreeze in here that runs low you start burning oil just yeah it doesn't go right so it must be done so it says it's got a canning filter we'll take that off and we'll have a look in there as well and here's your little tiny battery with 
cable ties. I mean, end of the day, I'm not going to moan too much about that. It's probably lost a little strap that goes across it. So securing it in here is the right thing to do and probably cause some problems. And you can just get a glimpse of the uh, carburetor top here. Again, look, look how hard it is to get to. You know, is that tape on there? Looks like someone might have played this already. I'm not quite sure. When we get it all off, we'll be able to tell. But everything has to come off. I understand that, you know, when you're going to work on a bike, you don't want to take it all off. You know, you might be using it every day, so you just want a quick job and get back on the road. It's half a job done. For me, I can take everything off of this. Now, the value of these bikes, good, decent condition for this year, 1,100 quid, 11.50, poor condition 900 to a thousand pounds. How much do you put into this bike now? I mean, the micro switch four pound, brake lever 10, 15 pounds. The rear master cylinder, uh, caliper, disc, you, know, you could be looking up to 200 quid. Remember, you can't get these W parts cheap. You can't get a snide part. The sprocket and um, chain, more than likely 50 pound, you're probably going to get a deal on there. But what's the sense of getting a cheap one? Remember, that's the whole back wheel moving round. Um, 15 stone nearly, fat bastard, I know. 14 stone, 10. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of weight on these bikes when you're giving it some, you know, and that's what pulls the chain. I always say get a quality chain. Don't scrimp on a chain, please. Don't do it. It's not worth it. That's what you get when you get Lex Motos, and that's what I keep pulling as it is to get a quality chain and sprocket. Rear brake, I've got to take off. I'm not going to start buying parts for this until I know where I am with it. Because, at the end of the day, rear tyre, 90 quid plus £10 fitting. This brake system here could cost up to £200 if I can't source one else. You've got a £50 chain and sprocket, you've got this, then I've got to service it, time. Um, you know, you could be adding on £400 easy, plus MOT. You know, all of a sudden now you're paying a lot for a bike. So you've got to get them at a good price to be able to put the money into it than to make any money out of it, if not anything really. Um, which is a shame for such a good bike. Now, there's one other thing they suffer from. Speedo drive. They really, really do suffer from these speedo drives. Um, a lot of these bikes seem to as well. Um, good old cable and, you know, speedo drive at the front. You can't really go that badly wrong with them. Uh, on the other videos, when they start going wrong, you know, you've got to take the front spindle out, and generally, it's a round little thing that is with two prongs, and that spins it round. They jam up on these bikes, but 15, 12 quid. When you come to the electronic speedo drives, which these are, which is a cable that goes from the front all the way to the back wheel, is this little thing here. I'm not going to do a close up, but it's this little thing here that rotates on the di rear disc that tells you what speed you're going. Tiny little thing, but the cable goes all the way up to the front. They are a lot of bloody money. They really are 50, 90 pounds, something silly. Uh, main dealer, you can't get snide ones from them. Um, same as actual clocks go. Um, they do a lot of models like this. And to be honest, you're looking at it here, it looks just like the NRG ones do as well. So, and they have the same sort of problems, if I'm really honest with you. So, yes, they're great bikes. The main thing that goes wrong is the last owner. And, you know, I, I hate to say that at the end of the day. You know, if you pot around it with some WD-40 and you care for the bike and it starts making a funny sound, just stop. Do you know, you look at what the problem is. That rear disc must be messing around for a long, long time, making some terrible grinding noises. If it had been sorted out with just simple, I don't know, you can get brake pads now for 10, 15 pounds, it wouldn't have caused half of the problems here already. Saying that, Master Cylinder could have gone and jammed up. I just don't know. And this is the problem when you get a bike that you haven't had before. I said this about tyres, a lot of people don't check your tyres. Um, they just ride it and ride it and ride it and then wonder why you know there's problems with it, it didn't handle too well. Always try and put 30 pounds pressure in either tyre, front and back. It's always a good starting point. 30 pounds pressure is pretty much a safe place to be and the bike will handle so much better. Get the manual, have a look, 32, 34, again, you know, some big bikes have 40 pounds pressure in them. Um, I've never seen many with less than 30, that's why I'll say 30 pounds pressure. Look around your bike, WD-40 or generic spray can around the old bits and bobs is great. If you come off it, check it all over. I've done a video already where you have an accident and going over the bike. I often say wash the bike because you'll find things you might not have found. These bikes rattle a lot, 
not as bad as Lex Moto, shall I say, but you've still got to go round and you've still got to make sure that everything's good. You know, it's just a necessity to do it. You must do it periodically. Anyway, next video coming up. Now I've stopped babbling. I'm just trying to say <laughs> where the lever is so loose, it's catching on this bit here. Do you know? Oh, silly. I'm just trying to say you pay a lot for these bikes, you want them to get you to work, college, wherever you're going to go. You know, you just cannot jump in them every day, jump in, jump on even every day and expect them to do exactly what they're going to do. You know, give them a bit of love. Right, next video after this one will be me actually taking it apart and having a look what's wrong with her and hopefully getting her back on the road. Um, there you go. Take care of yourselves on the road, especially in this really crappy weather. And like, share and subscribe. Bye bye.